Um, fungi. Well, that, that all started with um, our eldest daughter, Donna. She was at high school and they were asked to do for biology um, something on plants, botany, I should have said, I think, on plants. So she and uh, uh, her girlfriend decided they'd do something different and they'd do one on fungi. Okay, and they, I haven't seen the actual written work, but they've got uh, a little cardboard fold out with pages in it and each page had uh, a study of a particular fungi that they had found and uh, we named them as best we could. I didn't know anything about fungi at all in those days and uh, Roger Hilton who was at UWA came across this little booklet and he said uh, to Donna um, why don't you do a book on it and of course when you're in high school you're flat out learning all the uh, hard stuff and uh, she didn't have time for that. So Muggins got the job and uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, Roger Hilton was, uh, I started off from scratch, really from scratch. I knew what a mushroom was, you could eat it and all that sort of stuff. But um, uh, Roger said, well, uh, I'll uh, give you all the help I can and I used to go to, he was in Netherlands and uh, the trip right down to Netherlands with all the collected fungi and so forth and uh, get them to identify and gradually they sort of fell into places, the, the ones that were edible, ones that uh, um, bolletes and so forth, ones with pores and so forth. So uh, we built up quite a, um, a lot of uh, knowledge from him. Uh, what's coming up next? Uh, it's right through my daughter here. Okay. All right, we'll go through these fairly quickly, mainly to point out the different, the variety of fungi that there are around. There are two main groups, by the way, uh, two that are mycorrhizal, they help the trees to get nutrients, they, because fungi are invisible in their uh, former state, in the first state. The mycelium, uh, the hyphae are that uh, fine that you need a good magnifying glass to uh, find and actually see them. But then they get into my, uh, mycelium where they all uh, go and you'll be fairly, fairly uh, familiar with those when they're in the uh, garden, you're digging over and you see all this white thready stuff. That's where the, uh, the hyphae uh, join up. Now they lock onto the roots of trees and supply because they're so vast in the ground, they can pick up nutrients that the tree hasn't got a hope of getting enough of. And, uh, we've got very, very poor ancient soils in WA, so the trees really look forward to um, sharing it with, uh, um, with the fungi. Now, what do the fungi get out of it? Well, the fungi haven't got chlorophyll. Okay, the trees have got plenty of it and they send down the sugars and other nutrients to the fungi which haven't got chlorophyll. chlorophyll. So, uh, oh, and then you get the naughty, naughty ones, the, um, the pathogens and the um, honey fungus is one of these and it will take its uh, association with trees too far. It locks onto them and if it's not a healthy tree it might kill them. So, uh, they're very, very pretty and I've got one photo of one here, or a drawing. Okay, Armillaria, the honey fungus, that's the very one. Now, normally, that's just a single one to show you what it looks like. Uh, the colour hasn't come out, it's a beautiful yellow actually. They, uh, usually you see them around the base of a tree, beautiful golden yellow, but they're not very nice. Okay, my scenery as far as I know, am I right there, Peter? Oh, I'm not hard about that one. <laughs> what do you reckon? Petal cars? Okay. They're the little tiny ones that you see around. There's a whole uh, spate of them too. Little pixie caps and things like that. Gorgeous little things. And this is just to show you the variety of one species. This is one Eric and I used to call the slimy cap because it has uh, the top is very, very slimy. But look at all the different uh, heights of them and so forth. Some of them are on the way up, some of them won't grow any bigger. They're all collected and put in a, uh, a picture. Okay, that's one of the ones that uh, uh, Roger Hilton used to call the uh, uh, fire, uh, fire, fire girls, I think it was. 
Now they're the waxy ones and um, there are different compositions of the other ones. They're, they're flexible and um, very pretty. That should be a lot brighter than that, brighter red. So there's a whole team of those. Um, that's right, and this is um, Paul Armstrong who was one of our members in 1984. A soft bracket one, a crepidotus we think it is. Uh, a lot of the brackets are very woody and they'll last for years. So this one's a soft one and uh, it's dead and gone next year. Uh, Calossa, yellow stumps. I used to call this uh, Scotchman's beard for some reason. <laughs> they were yellow and hairy and bristly sort of thing. Some of these are my paintings out of a book I did. And that's a, um, a very pallid looking one. That's uh, a jelly fungus and they are nice and bright yellow usually, or they can be bright. Um, not much good, much good for eating because they're absolutely tasteless. So. Mm. Um, and another one that's a bit different with tooth teeth, tooth fungus. And they come up in the hills, that one's from our daughter's uh, backyard in Glen Forest. So tooth fungi, another variety. And that's an edible one as long as you get it fresh. That's the beefsteak fungus. Um, it's a very poor picture of it though. The underside, there should have been two pictures there. This um, underside which is showing there should be quite red and it's like a, a, a piece of meat if you like. The top is dull brown like that but it must have been stuck for something to get a photo of for that one. Agaricus. Now agaricus are all our mushrooms and that, that, that sort of family. Now they're not all edible though. Um, the ones you see in the shops are usually pretty safe to eat. But um, one I tried and I uh, didn't know about cutting them down the middle. And if they turn yellow, back off. <laughs> they're not good for you because there's another element in there that's uh, uh, not supposed to be good for you. And somebody, one of the other teachers has been eating them, so, well, he's not dead yet, so I'll have a go, but I'll back off afterwards. That's one of the big horse mushrooms, I'm not sure of the species. Another one of them, beautiful things, some of them go about this far across, and really, uh, and good to eat too. And that's another one, I'm, I think it is an agaricus, one of the mushrooms, and it's got fine, um, very fine, uh, uh, fine gills, yeah, and uh, a <coughs> garicus looking cap, so I might be wrong on that. Uh, weirdos, now <laughs> some people unfortunately get um, deformations. Uh, this thing there, this is the main fungus body and that has grown out of it. You wonder what the heck you found. <laughs> it's just a weirdo. Um, I think there's another one, yes, that's yeah, not a very good shot of it. I, you can see there um, a little lump growing out of that one. And sometimes you'll get another fungus growing out of the particular fungus you're looking at. Polypores, now, and all the other ones I've shown you so far, except for the tooth fungus, have got gills. And these ones are pored. Now that one's got huge pores, okay, hexagonia. And uh, that's one of the scarlet bracket fungus. Uh, Coccinius gives it away there. And very common on logs. And that's one that'll last through the different seasons and grow bigger and bigger. You can see the new growth on it each year. That's another one. Um, bright yellow below, that's right, yeah. That one is often used. Any of you do um, dyeing of material at all? No? Well, that one's used for a dyeing material, one of the several ones that are used for dyeing. And that is, uh, um, that all should be bright yellow. So usually way up on trees and they'll fall down. And then, then what was that one? Ah, oh, puffballs, yeah. No, sorry, earthballs. Now, the difference between puffballs and earthballs, earthballs don't puff. Okay, because they're solid, they're round and they're hard, um, fairly hard anyway. And all the black stuff in the middle is uh, spore, spore material. And they're waiting for a little boy to come along and give it a good 
kit and away it goes and spread the spores all over the place. Now that's a stink horn, uh, Phallus pradrianus stink horn, and they do. Um, all that black stuff there is um, a mucus which pongs to high heaven. Now why does it pong? What is it trying to attract? Blowflies. Blowflies. Blow <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a whole family of those. Now that one's another poor, it's, uh, uh, it's a lace or basket or net fungus. It should be a sphere and it's also covered with uh, putrid mucus. Um, and what it does is detach itself from the base and the wind blows it along. All the spores get spread around. Very handy. And one more, I think. Oh no, that's a that's a stalk puffball, and you can see the top has burst open. That's the um, natural way they disperse their spores. And the matchstick there. A lot of people send a photo to you. You've got no idea how big it is because there's no gauge to it. And uh, uh, if you do send a photo into us, they'll be very welcome. Um, put a Cut it down the middle, show the inside, put a, a matchstick or you know, 10 cent coin, anything to give a size. Okay, and that's an ammonita. Um, you'll notice the big, what they call the vulva, it's typical of ammonitas, but they don't all have it, as you people will well know. <laughs> so, uh, um, and uh, a lovely gill structure, very, very fine gills. You can see the st structure of the gills there. Gills are a point too. If they're well spread, that's an indicator. If they're packed like that, that's another indicator. Some of them have got fork gills, properly fork gills. Okay. Um, now, you notice along the bottom there, what do you reckon that is? A bone. Okay. Now these ones, live are found near animal carcasses and they're feeding on the the meat products what's the word for that um, protein. protein i suppose yeah coming on the long side of that so when i saw the bone there and a the fungus aha i know what that is okay puff balls right now as i was talking before um, one of the gentlemen in this audience gave me that one and uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's yours. Yeah, it hasn't come through very well. Now that's an, an earth star, um, and it's a puffball on a stalk. Most, mostly they're on the ground and not uh, supported like that. Some of them are very tall actually, and uh, they burst out. And uh, it only takes a drop of rain on that, and puff outside of that little office comes a puff of spores and gets blown away, hopefully. Okay, so thank you very much John for that one. And thank Rachel for putting it into it too. <laughs> right. Okay. Well I think you've had a, enough of me for now, so thank you for being very patient and you too.